$300 and this gaming PC will play AAA titles? You heard that right, for $300, we're gonna build a very powerful gaming PC and show you guys how you can easily do it at home. But before we do that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by our friends at FlexiSpot, the desk we use primarily here at the Toasty Bros HQ to make our content. Let's learn more about the sale they're currently running. They're currently running their anniversary sale, which can save you up to 50% off. And one of the products that you can save on is the FlexiSpot E7, a customizable, kinetic, and easy to build desk that offers tons of accessories and customization to tailor the desk to all your needs. They don't call this a standing desk for nothing. This desk can hold up to 355 pounds and it uses a dual motor, three stage leg design that can lower and raise the desk from 23 inches all the way up to 49 inches tall in height. The best part about the E7 is that it comes with a large variety of frame layouts along with desktop material and size options to ensure that you get the perfect desk for your area. E7 makes cable management easier than ever before with a cable tray to tuck away all those cords hanging underneath your desk, a screen touch keypad that provides custom height presets allowing you to quickly adjust to your height desired, and and a built-in USB charging port to keep your battery full. You can also add on easy roll-on lockable casters, slide-out drawer, and a clamp power strip to power your devices easily. Even here at the Toasty Bros office, we love using FlexiSpot desks because they help us build PCs, stay productive during those lazy work days, and they're also great for gaming. You can use our code YTB15 to receive an extra 10% off on orders over $500, and if you purchase the E7 series standard desk now, you can get 50% off of their ergonomic chair. Big thanks again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to the video. All right, guys, you ready to see this CPU right here this thing is in tin foil which yeah we don't you know we don't really condone or recommend doing i just feel like 10 typically uh will tend to 10 to 10 conduct electricity so it just seems like it'd be a little unsafe like a little esd and i feel like it'd go through the whole cpu but it's not really the most ideal way we recommend a little clamshell action but hey tin foil it got here in one piece hopefully it works i7 47 74 core 8 thread it's more than enough to pair with the gpu that you'll see in just a minute but it is getting older it is ddr3 but we paid 30 dollars for it so for the motherboard we have a machinist motherboard which is almost starting to become a name brand around here in a ways if you look on wish aliexpress and other places like that this seems to be a very popular i'd almost call it like a rebrand of used chipset motherboards, oh, diamond, diamond quality. Diamond quality. For thirty dollars, we get diamond quality. That's insane. That's yeah. That's that's pretty dope. But yeah, long story short, thirty dollar motherboard. That's an H eighty one chipset. We'll see how new it really is and how well it works. Now for RAM, we could have bought this stuff on eBay, but honestly, we're just using eBay pricing. We had a bunch of RAM at PC Bros, which is our PC selling company, and we have one stick of Crucial eight gig, sixteen hundred megahertz DDR three L, and then we have a stick of Samsung that is also DDR three eight gigs, but 1600 megahertz. I have no clue if it's DDR3L. We'll find out. I think it'll work together just fine. We actually have pretty good success rate mismatching RAM here at this channel. <laughs> it shows. Now, one of the few name brand parts in this build, we have a Team Group 5 12 gig, two and a half inch SSD. And yeah, this thing's new out of the box. We really don't recommend getting used storage. There's almost no reason for it. You really don't save enough money. And honestly, a lot of times it ends up going bad pretty quick. Now to cool that i7, we have a new stock cooler here. I believe this is just like a standard LGA uh, like 1200 or yeah, it pretty much fits every CPU from 11 gen, like all the way back pretty much to first gen. So should be just fine for this i7, but hey, if you want to splurge, you get a little bit of a tower cooler, feel free. Now for the graphics card, this is an OEM GTX 1660 Super. These cards are great value right now in the used market and it can be easily had for around $100. You do get the NVIDIA encoder. So if you want to dabble with some light live streaming, you most certainly could with this graphics card, but really it's going to be great for 1080p esports titles and stretching into higher settings on some AAA titles if you want to. Really love this card for the money right now. Regardless, you're building a $300 PC or $500 PC, this is a great option. And for the power supply, wow, we've been using this one a lot. This is the Zalman Gigamax 600 watt power supply. You don't really need to get a 600 watt power supply for this build. The reason we got this is it's a decently rated power supply, so we didn't want to really cheap out here. If you want to cheap out at home, you could get a Thermal Take Smart and save yourself about $20. But we think spending the extra 20 bucks on a solid power supply that will give us an upgrade path in the future is more than worth it. And yeah, this thing is ready to ship on Amazon with Prime shipping. Don't remember the model name of this one, but this is a classic DIY PC case. It's the ARGB Q8BK. But yeah, this case is a solid, cheap micro ATX case that comes in around $49. You can get the Sama RGB case that's on Newegg as well for around the same price, but we just used that case, so I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. We do get tempered glass, magnetic side panel, which is pretty cool, um, and RGB up front. But yeah, it's a very basic case. We're trying to put together a PC for $300. We don't wanna overspend on the case we don't have to, but we do get a touch of RGB to make this thing look really gamer. But let's not waste any more time to put this thing together. It won't take too long to put together and then show you guys exactly how well this thing can perform.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are playing Apexy Legends. And yes, I called it Apexy Legends. I can call it whatever I want. That's what it's called. Yeah, but we're playing medium settings, 1080p, native res, no upscaling. We also have max FOV to really be able to see everything in this game. Fans are, which fan is that? Is it the CPU fan? I think it is the CPU fan is really rabbing. It's not running that not hot though. No, not for an i7. No, not bad for an i7 with the stock cooler. I know that it could be the GPU fan too. I don't know, it's a single fan 1660 Super, but it, it's running a little loud, but not too bad. I just now realize this is the Havoc and not the Nemesis. Oh, dude, drugs. Oh. dude, the drugs make me so fast. I was climbing like a little spider. Oh, and that guy did some freaking damage. Oh, oh no. Oh. Bamboozled. Oh my god, I found the real one. But you got him. Oh, oh I know what I can do. It's about to get crazy. Yes, Schlegs. Oh! oh. <laughs> Give me that kill. <laughs> oh wait, one of those is real. That was a this crazy, this game's over before it ever even started. Oh, oh. No. Wolf Squad! Wolf Squad, come on, Wolf Squad. It's always squad. about the Wolf Squad, they always hey, do that. The PC though, it's, it's honestly on the Wolf Squad for 300 bucks, it's on it. Howl like a wolf. Ooh. Let's play some Fortnite. All right, guys, we're in Fortnite. I'll show you guys the settings. Once the stuttering stops, Jesus bottleneck. Uh, we are running DX11. We're not running performance mode or DX12. I'm thinking I'm gonna turn off all the upscaling because every time we have a cheaper PC like this and we run any sort of upscaling, it really it it. hurts the CPU. And no upscaling normally runs significantly better. So we'll land and turn that off here in a second. But yeah, because we're, we're kind of CPU bound and I really don't think we should be with the 4770 and Fortnite on lower settings, but We'll see. There's, there's one thing to keep in mind with Fortnite too that we've, I feel like we've noticed a lot more recently is like the first game is almost like the loading game. Like yes. all the textures load in, but it's the same map every time. Yeah, we'll show you guys the settings here. We are at medium low settings. I'm gonna turn this off. Mm. No upscaling, native 1080p. I think you might've had the 3D, was the 3D res still 73%? That might be a problem. Yep, let me fix that. Oh. It's obviously gonna be a little worse. <laughs> a little worse. 60, 70 FPS medium settings. Not not a not a crazy high refresher experience, but playable. But yeah, I think a lot of the stuttering in Fortnite is older architecture. You got Fort Gen i7, which is rocking DDR3 memory. Pretty slow clock speed, so you're gonna deal with some stutter. I think with this system, performance mode would be your best bet. Um, if you're wanting to lock in a less stuttery experience, it'd probably be about the same FPS, but I've noticed with performance settings on DDR3, you'll get a smoother experience <coughs> rather than this like jarring back and forth. Ah! Uh oh. Oh, this is. It hit you once. You got paracord. Ah! Leave the tree and nobody. Oh, he's... you're metting up? Are you kidding me? Why are you running? Where do you go? No! Are you. <laughs> Ooh. Certified sniper. I think that one hit his bike. <laughs> the ultimate weapon combo, the big iron with the boomerang. Oh! Yeah, guys, Fortnite. More than playable. Can't really complain too much about that. Run performance settings, you want the more optimal experience. But we're gonna go ahead and do, because Fortnite, you know, it's Fortnite. It's such, such a good time. But we're gonna run some more demanding games that'll push this thing to its limits and just kind of go over this $300 PC. Should you buy these combos off AliExpress? Are there other options you can go with? We'll talk about that because I am not going to spend my time hunting for somebody else. Where are they at? I don't see anybody. Let's play those games now. All right, guys, we just got done benchmarking our nice and cheap $300 gaming PC. And as you can see, there is that ever so slight bottleneck with that i7 mixed with that 1660 Super. They are starting to show their age, sadly, but that doesn't mean you can't still play 
all your esports titles, and even some of your AAA titles at lower settings. I will say the motherboard you can get off of AliExpress would really only make sense if you have a CPU already, because at $30, I still think the i7-4770 is a little bit too expensive. If you're gonna pay like 20 bucks for it and make this bill well under $300, that might be a good reason to pick up one of these motherboards, but you're probably better off if you are looking for a i7-4770 combo, just going on eBay and finding a combo with everything all together. But it's still cool to see these motherboards exist. And if you wanna build this PC or just buy the motherboard, check the link in the description down below. They will be affiliate links, they will help us out. Let us know what you think of this $300 PC. Is there a different way you'd have done this $300 PC? Let us know down below. And as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toastybros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. PCBros.tech is where you need to go to get this PC or another PC just like it. PCBros.tech, we sell gaming PCs all the way from budget PCs up to super high-end 4090 rigs if you want one. You just go to Toasty Bros 2 and check out and save 2% of your next purchase. See you guys later, goodbye. Oh yeah, this, my goodness. Buy, buy a build mat already, guys. Build a PC with a build mat, it makes it better. See you guys later.